The songwriter said, I serve a risen Savior. He is in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. Beautiful hymn for Easter, He Lives. We come today celebrating that. This is Ron Wallace, a pastor of Shallowford Free Will Baptist Church. And we are celebrating the Easter season. Today I want us to think about the resurrection. What a wonderful truth that is founded in the scriptures. And uh, just to remind you that the entire New Testament church, uh, the church that we are today, is built upon this truth and this principle. That Jesus Christ, as Paul says, that he went uh, to the grave. Uh, he was, of course, crucified, buried, and rose again. What a wonderful thing and what a wonderful truth. We've been talking about, leading up to, we've talked about uh, the death of our Lord on, on the cross. And uh, we talked about how Jesus not only died for us, but that he was buried. And uh, he was buried in the tomb of uh, Joseph of Arimathea, a borrowed tomb in that sense. On the day of his burial, some of his uh, followers, a group of women, uh, very loyal followers, had prepared his body very hastily. They had not finished the preparation. The Jewish way of burial was to wrap the body in claws and add spices and the various uh, ointments and perfumes so that as the body decayed that the odor would be suppressed somewhat. And they had started this preparation but had not finished it because we're told in the scriptures that it was actually uh, on a day when uh, the next day would be a holy day and so they had to uh, do it very quickly. Uh, our days do not begin as the Jewish day began. Uh, just reminding you that the Jewish day began at 6 p.m. in the afternoon or in the evening. And that started the next day. Uh, so since they were uh, faced with that, up against that hard day, uh, they really did not have time to, uh, f to adequately and fully prepare his body. So that's why we read in the scriptures in, uh, in chapter uh, 24 of Luke's gospel, uh, we read the following. On the first day of the week, early in the morning, they came and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were as afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake, uh, spoke these words to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And in our sequence, today is that third day. And beloved, I would remind you uh, that the, the message pertaining to the resurrection uh, is very clear in the Word of God. Uh, it is our understanding, and this is the traditional view, that Jesus was crucified on Friday. And uh, just to give you the time sequence, uh, he was before Pilate that morning by 6 o'clock. By 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, everything had already been, the trial was over. Uh, Pilate had sentenced him, and literally the crucifixion started at 9 o'clock. And then we read in the scriptures from that from the 6th hour, Remember, counting from 6 in the morning around to 6 would be 12 noon. From 12 noon, the 6th hour, until the ninth hour, 3 p.m., uh, darkness covered the face of the earth. And so in that time frame, on the day of Friday, 
they had just a few hours once Jesus' body was taken down to get him prepared and put him in a tomb. So the traditional view is that Jesus was placed in the tomb on Friday and then we know that the, the, the Saturday is the Sabbath day for the Jews and so the, that would have been the day of law. He's in the ground. But then Sunday is the third day if you consider Friday and uh, Saturday and then the first day begin on Sunday. So you have three days. Now, don't get, don't get hung up on that. This is the traditional view. And uh, we know that it is not three full 24-hour days. Uh, and yet, this has been accepted by the church as satisfying God's requirement. And I would also suggest to you that if that view bothers you, uh, there's another view that believes that, in fact, since this uh, Passover may have very well uh, been on Friday itself, that the actual crucifixion would have occurred on Thursday. And there's some who take that position, and therefore they have Jesus three full days uh, and, uh, and in the grave, so that satisfies them. I think the major point is this, uh, that on the third day, however you count and get that third day, that the promise of the resurrection is fulfilled. I confess to you, I am a third day believer. In fact, I believe that when Jesus foretold his death and uh, his arrest, and uh, he said it a number of times, uh, in Matthew 16, we read the scriptures again, and it says, From that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and be raised the third day. And you'll find that not only in Matthew, and at least two or three times, you'll find it in Mark, and you'll also find it in Luke. Uh, in Luke chapter 9, he says, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. The third day is very important. And it is important because uh, if you count the fact that they understood in the Jewish system that this was the day appointed for the Lord to rise, and so as we see these disciples, these women, uh, who are important in our narrative and important in our story, when we see them come to the, uh, to the graveside and find it empty, they become the very first witnesses to the Lord's resurrection. And uh, as you see, there is even repeated to them uh, by the angel in the, in the story, in the narrative, where Jesus is. Uh, they chastened them a bit and said, why did you come looking for uh, the living among the dead? Meaning that the, they should have believed the truth. And then they quoted for them uh, one of the prophecies of our Lord, and they said, the Son of Man must be uh, delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. So you have not only the promise, and you have the Word of God making mention of it. Uh, Jesus said it several times, and it's amazing that this was very well known. And the disciples should have believed it, and believed it very quickly. Uh, these women, uh, as they now are aware what, of what happened, they become not only the first ones at the tomb, but they also become the very first witnesses of the resurrection. And so they go and tell other disciples, and uh, certainly this means that uh, the word begins to spread. It begins to spread very, e uh, very quickly that morning and, and throughout that day and then thereafter. It's also interesting that not only did Jesus mention the third day, but the, the plot against him by the, the rulers and the leaders, they were so afraid that he might rise or that his body would disappear that they went to Pilate, and this is recorded in Matthew 27, verse 64. They went to Pilate and asked that Pilate set a guard. Now, what that literally meant was that Pilate would uh, order a group of soldiers to go to the tomb, stand guard around the clock uh, to make sure that nothing could happen to that tomb. And uh, you may remember, not only did he order that guard, but they seal the tomb with the Roman seal. And so to make it secure, 
And here's the, here's the plea of those Jewish leaders. It says, therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come at night and steal him away, and say to the people, he has risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. So you see, the leaders were very concerned that Jesus indeed was going to rise. And they thought perhaps by... Uh, having a guard set and having soldiers nearby, that somehow that would keep him perhaps from being able to rise. Uh, it is interesting because as the awareness of the resurrection took place, you can imagine there are various reactions in the scriptures. The, the prophets had taught it and taught it well in the Old Testament. Uh, Jesus had foretold and told it in the four Gospels as we read it. Angels reinforced uh, to the disciples that indeed this was God's plan, that he would, uh, he would be crucified, he would be buried, but he would rise the third day. So the third day receives a lot of emphasis, and yet the disciples are slow to believe it. Women being first at the tomb are the first ones who are convinced of it because they recognize not only is the tomb empty, but then you may remember that some of these same women, in fact, at least on two occasions on this day of resurrection, Jesus appeared uh, to Mary Magdalene and also to a group of women who were uh, some of these same ones who came early that morning to the tomb. So the first witnesses and the first to see the resurrected Lord. Indeed, he was alive. And in, in their experience, they not only believed it, but they hastened then to tell others. So you have the Jewish leaders who fear that it could happen. You have disciples who are slow to believe that it would happen. You have women who are now excited because it did happen and they're witnesses to it. But then where we are today, all who believe in the third day miracle of the resurrection discover that the power of salvation is in that belief. For those who believe that he rose on the third day, they put their confidence and their faith and they trust their trust in him as the Savior, who is a living Savior, able to redeem and save to the uttermost those who come to him. So I am a third day believer and I trust you are too. I may if not already, perhaps today you would put your confidence, your trust in this Lord who died, who was buried, but who lives forevermore, for he is the Son of God. And in him, there's the perfect salvation that God has for us. Father, we ask your blessings and we pray to your peace and your comfort upon your people today. Jesus is alive and he lives within each of us.